Hello friends, welcome to this session of audiobook reviews from Team Think Reviews. Today's talk features a book set in the world of that most logical and yet most beguiling entity created by men, money. To most of us, the world of big money is a mystery. Our interactions are limited to our bank transactions, bill payments, savings, loans, etc. as part of our day-to-day -day lives. But when it comes to finance at corporate levels, there are many layers and intricacies involved. There are also always people who are smart but not very ethical, who take advantage of little loopholes here and there to commit white-collar crimes. Author R. V. Raman has given us many successful corporate thrillers where he features such stories. He had a brilliant career in the corporate world himself, and now he gives us richly detailed stories based in this world with interesting characters and thrilling plots. We recently read his book called Saboteur and published a review for it on thinkerviews.com. So let's take a look at this book. The cover page of Saboteur features a dark suited man in the background of blue digital looking space, a server room. His head is bowed, giving us a glimpse of the burden he is supposedly carrying. It is an attractive cover page if you are browsing for a thriller. The book opens at an Indian e-tailing company called My Magic Hat. One of the corporate leaders, Nilay Adiga, is about to wrap up his day. My Magic Hat is going through a due diligence exercise being performed by a proposed investor company called Kentoff. Puneet, the person in charge of this due diligence exercise, has taken a long time for his work, and Nilay is now getting a bit apprehensive about the results. Matters are made worse when his colleague Sundar brings him the bad news that my magic hat is facing an imminent cash crunch and the cash injection from Kentoff is required more than ever. As they are leaving the office, Nilay offers to give Puneet a ride. Puneet declines. He says there is a car coming to pick him up. The next day brings surprises for Nilay. For one, his boss Gautam Puraria has found hidden electronic bugs in their corporate office. And secondly, Puneet has gone missing. Puneet's family contacts their distant relative, Inspector Dhruvi Kishore, who works in the White Collar Crime Division of Bengaluru Police. Although missing persons are not her area, she agrees to take a look in the matter. As Dhruvi slowly learns about what Puneet's work was, about the hidden bugs and suspected corporate espionage, she decides to pursue the matter further with her colleague Alex. Things escalate soon as they are faced with someone who is offering stolen confidential data from My Magic Head on the black market. Gautam Puraria now informs the rest of his family his father Shashikant Puraria, head of PRL, and his much older brothers Raj and Dilip. While PRL is a big name in Indian retail and has been in market for many years, My Magic Head is their newest venture and entirely Gotham's baby. Dhruvi and Alex capture the culprits behind the data theft, but instead of getting answers to their questions, they are further baffled when My Magic Head's IT expert Moin Aziz analyzes the retrieved cartridges. Moin is murdered soon after the cartridges are retrieved, and this leaves the rest of the My Magic Head staff badly shaken. Things are getting serious now, with Moin murdered, Puneet missing, and crores of rupees at stake. Who will be going next? Will Dhruvi solve this puzzle in time? Is it an insider or an outsider who is bringing about my magic head's destruction? These questions are answered as the book comes to its conclusion. 
now on to my views on this book. I enjoyed this book for not only its fast pace and thrills, but also the detailed information and insights it gives in the world of electronic retailers or e-tailers. We hear in media about the huge chunks of money that companies like Amazon are generally making or losing in new markets like India when they first come into these markets to compete against the traditional way of shopping through physical retailers. They invest massive chunks of money just in brand building. While the huge discounts and free shipping are great conveniences for the customers, that cannot be logically profit-making if the e-tailers are selling at prices lower than MRPs. In reality, an e-tailer is only a convenience platform through a website, while the goods still need to be supplied in physical form from a physical seller, whether a manufacturer or a trader somewhere. Adding to it are the IT and communication costs. The e-tailer can hope to make money only in a future where they have built a loyal customer base who will shop with them no matter what the prices were, and they were able to raise their prices. How is it then that they managed to keep operating? They obtain money from various investors. And as their stocks slowly rise in a favorable stock market, the initial investors usually make good money on their investment and exit. Someone else then picks up the stock and continues with the cycle. In theory, the Indian e-commerce is going to be massive in size and by anybody's imagination, it is a profitable venture and there are a lot of interested investors who want a piece of it. But the traditional way of evaluating a company's worth when you are buying it is also of no use here. As the author says, the traditional way of valuing a company is through projecting its revenues, costs, and profits over next five to 10 years. But this couldn't work in the e-tailing industry, as no company made a profit. In fact, they incurred such huge losses that traditional valuation methods were rendered unusable. Also, the e-tailers can play with their products to make the picture look a lot rosier than it actually is. How so? Who is to say what the real MRP is? Any retailer, electronic or physical, can boost his GMV by selling little-known brands at an inflated MRP and offering a high discount. Not only does a huge discount give buyers an illusion of a good deal, but it also inflates the GMV. We mentioned initial losses. Sometimes it is the e-tailer who has to pay the seller because they advertise huge discounts on their website. These are called gap-funded transactions. Transactions where My Magic Head sells below the seller's price and funds the discount through incentives and marketing cost reimbursement. No cash actually comes from the seller to My Magic Head. Keeping all this in mind as background, the seriousness of the situation is understandable when someone like Puneet performing due diligence exercise disappears. From here on, the author reveals layer upon layer of complex problems that are all interlinked. I also liked the characters as they are so real lifelike, especially Nilay, Vibha, Moen and Alex. Nilay's character is very ambitious, but like many other middle-class boys and girls who go through engineering and management colleges to jump into the corporate pool, only to find that it will take more than intelligence to travel through its murky depths. And not to forget the business Mughals, the Purarias, and their approach to business with questionable ethics. We can see how the ethical lines are blurred as the amount of money in question starts rising. 
In a different context, 20 lakhs would have been sufficient to indict a CEO or even bring down a chief minister. But for an unregulated private equity fund that dealt in thousands of crores of other people's money, it was seen as trivial. Author R.V. Raman is known to feature strong female characters in all his books. Here he gives us the bullet-riding lady inspector Dhruvi Kishore, who brings the whole chain of events together through her intelligence and perseverance. The author also gives us a realistic view of the world where women are yet to make their mark. As one of the few female inspectors around, there was constant pressure on her to perform, to not give her detractor the slightest of excuses. While the system itself did not overtly discriminate against women, there were times when she wondered if she was being measured by the same yardstick that her male colleagues were. The book is very thought-provoking in terms of how our purchase decisions as a consumer affect so many lives and futures of big companies. There is no denying the convenience that e-tailers offer in our busy days and hectic routines. And while Indians are canny enough to go for the sweetest deal, we also need to think in terms of sustainability. Where is our order really coming from? Do we really need to purchase something just because it is on discount? Are we just fueling corporate greed and an unsustainable lifestyle on our planet by buying things we don't need or can obtain from a place near us? In summary, an enjoyable, thought-provoking corporate thriller that is a must-read for all those who like to understand the corporate world and learn about the dark side associated with the glamour of success and money. We hope you enjoyed listening to this audio book review. If you are a fan of white-collar crimes and corporate thrillers, do let us know if there are any other books that you would like us to review on this blog.